or a pig skin that goes and rolls around in the mud, 12 or 11 people on each side, then we should be able to get excited about Jesus. Amen? Amen. It's good to be here. Now, y'all need to quit switching seats on me because I look out there and everybody's in different spots. I just can't get used to that. I'm just kidding. Praise the Lord. That's a good problem to have. It just shows that if you, you know, if you don't show up early, your seat's going to be taken. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. This, and I'm going to be honest with you, um, is not a very easy lesson to teach because it addresses certain things um, that some of us may not necessarily agree on um, on, certain, on certain aspects of what you think versus what I think. However... There is a very strong truth behind it, and I am going to teach it to the best of my ability, and hopefully that when we're said and done, you're, we're all still friends. Um, the teaching part of the Word of God, preaching, I tell, I tell all young ministers, oh, I'm called to preach. I said, okay, well... You know, that's only 10% of the job. Getting up behind the pulpit, you know, those of you that may have questioned about full-time preachers and what do they do, um, getting up here is only 10% of, of what I do. There's a tremendous amount of other things behind scenes that until you ever walk a mile in the, in the shoes of a minister, you don't know. You know the things that takes that takes place. Uh, I can remember uh, Sister Paris was telling a story not too long ago about Brother Paris receiving a phone call at three o'clock in the morning from one of the people in the church, and he picked up the lamp and put it to his ear and was like, "Hello," because he was in a dead sleep and he didn't know where the where the ringing was coming from. So he picks up the whole lamp and puts it up to his ear. So you just never know what's going to take place. But my point in what I'm saying here is. When we talk about the ministry, everyone, everybody say everyone, everyone is called into the ministry. Everyone. It's not just me. So living a life or, or being able to share that with people uh, outside of the four walls is a ministry. So Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Now, reading the New Living Translation, it says, but, the, but when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, He will produce this kind of fruit in us, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Here, there is no conflict with the law. Tonight, of course, I've been going in order. I've not changed the order of how I've been teaching. Tonight, we're going to talk about faithfulness. Now, faithfulness is not common, is not a common word anymore. You don't hear people talk about or giving awards for faithfulness. You know, faithfulness um, is, is, you know, most of the time when faithfulness is used is at the 25th anniversary, the silver anniversary, or, you know, a gold watch at the end of a man that's retiring who spent a lifetime at his company. But 25-year marriages are very rare nowadays, you know, um, and people staying at one job is a very rare occurrence because of the competitive natures of other businesses out there. Instead of grooming their own folks, they, you know, 
go to somebody else's place and try to take the cream of the crop from there and offer them more money. So faithfulness is not a common word anymore. Faithfulness is kind of pushed to the background. And so we kind of get into a place where we don't really know what it means anymore. Being faithful. Faithfulness is extremely common. Even though it's not a common word, it is extremely common in other ways in our society. It is such an integral part of who we are and what we are about that society would crumble if there wasn't faithfulness. Okay? For example, take the Chicago residents of a family that took the Tylenol on September the 29th of 1982. Now, this is something I was reading about. Family has a headache. They go in the cabinet, get the Tylenol, take it, only a few hours later to be dead. The Tylenol was laced with cyanide. You want to know why? that you go to a, a over-the-counter now and it has all the plastics and, and, and the seals and all that stuff that it has nowadays, it spins from this time in 1982. Back then, you just went to, to Walmart or wherever it was and you just unscrewed it and was able to get into the medicine bottle and change, you know, there was no real protection like there is today because people were able to change it, okay? So... Or ask the family members of, of those that they put on, they kissed goodbye on the planes in September the 11th of 2011, or not, I mean, not 2011, 2001, uh, you know, uh, expecting them to return in the same manner, or those that were employed at the World Trade Center. We take faithfulness for granted. Amen? I mean, if, it, if it's, a, it's just somewhat of a, expectation if if our life was to was to change in any order you know maybe you drink two cups of coffee every morning but if you didn't have enough coffee for that two cups of coffee woe be to anybody that stands in your way it's an incredible shock to discover that some things that we rely on let us down. And when it lets us down, you know, everybody knows it. It shows how much faithfulness is taken for granted. Faithfulness is important to the human well-being because humans were made to operate on the principle of faith. What does that mean? Do you see anybody, occasionally, you'll see somebody acting crazy and running that the skies are falling. But for the most part, human society goes on about their lives not really understanding that they are standing on a planet suspended in space spinning at so many thousand revolutions per second. And if any one of those cogs that make that happen was to change, you would be destroyed in a matter of seconds. I mean, if the earth stops spinning, you don't stop because it does. The whole, literally, face of the earth would just spin out into space. We don't... It's just something we take for granted. We go on about our lives not thinking that the most integral part of what we do... I mean, if you're in, in, in standing in Antarctica, you're actually standing upside down, but your brain puts it to where you're standing right side up. Gravity keeps you there. But just think, you know, what if whatever the earth hangs upon, which the Scripture says is nothing, broke. That's how much we have faith. We have no way of making the process permanent. 
and we have no way to fix it if it is broke. Oh, you know, Hollywood can come out with movies of drilling to the Earth's core and pumping so much of this into it and reviving the planet. Huh. Try it. Not going to happen, right? Faithfulness is something we take for granted because every day we get up, we breathe something we cannot see. Everybody take a deep breath. Now hold it. Just kidding, you can breathe. What if you were placing a vacuum and all the air in the room was sucked out? You wouldn't have time to be miserable because you're fighting for air. We eat food we have not examined. Well, some of us haven't. We just trust. We have to. We trust that little nutrition package, packaging, you know, the, the label of how many calories or what's in it. Well, if you read that, some of us don't read it. We don't, you know, we just trust. The FDA says, boom. Okay, I'll eat it. I mean, it could be snails. But if it says beef, we pass through traffic lights. This morning, I'm going to preach on myself for a minute. I ran a red light. I did not mean to run the red light. I did stop, but for some reason I was thinking it was a four-way stop. And I took off. I don't know why I thought it was a four-way stop. I have stopped at that red light a hundred times over. But right out onto traffic I pulled. And I'm like, oh, Lord, what did I just do? I started begging God to forgive me. Lord, please don't let a car hit me and die while I'm breaking the law. You know, all those type of things. <laughs> we take things for granted. We stop at red lights. We go when they turn green, expecting everybody else not to act like the idiot I am. And they stop light when they're supposed to. We board planes and trust that they'll stay in the air with two pieces of metal hanging out the side. Right? It'll go up when it's supposed to, come down when it's supposed to. We're totally dependent on things external to us. We're built on faith. It's how we live. We're taught that at a young age. I don't have any kids in here that believe in Santa Claus, do I? All right. So we teach them, or society teaches them, that a big fat man in a red suit can fly around the world. I don't teach my kids this, but, but, but society teaches them this. Now, we'll, you know, take them to see... Santa Claus, get their picture with him. But they know I'm Santa Claus, except for Kinsley. And that's all because she thinks I'm lying to her. No, Daddy's Santa Claus. No, you're not. <laughs> yes, I am. No, you're not. Honey, I go buy the gifts. I put them there for you. No, I seen it. It's the Santa Claus movie or whatever it was. He goes around the world. I mean, she argued with me. Finally, I had to tell myself I was arguing with a four-year-old <laughs> and just let it go. But we teach them about the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy. We teach them about faith at a young age. And then their world, we want to know why their world comes crashing to a halt when they find out all of that was a lie. And then we want to know why they don't take God as faith. 
gospel because to them it's as much as a fairy tale as anything else we've taught them. That's why it's important to teach your kids the well, whether you teach your kids about Santa Claus, that's your business. But teach them the truth. Faith, it's what faith is. Faith is dependence. We depend. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's the definition of faith, right? We hope, even though we haven't seen it, we believe it. Skip down to verse 6 of Hebrews chapter 11. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we're built upon faith. Faith is very important. Okay? But with but faith without faithfulness is misplaced faith. Which can only end in disaster. That's why the two words, even though spelled different in the English language, are spelled exactly the same in the Greek language. Because you cannot have faith without faithfulness. Boy, it's quiet tonight. Either you're thinking or you're disagreeing with me. Got to have the both. They're both the same thing. In the Greek language, they're inseparable. That's why some translations say faith and some say faithfulness. Now, the Greek word for faith is pistis, which does mean belief, but also conviction, trust, confidence, Reliability, dependability. That's why God is the best example for faithfulness. How many would say God's non reliable? How many would say God, you can't depend upon God? No, we say He's reliable. He's dependable. There's not, you know, any kind of uh, any kind of thing about God that's that that separates him from those definitions. And therefore, we say God is faithful. Second Kim, Timothy two and thirteen. If we believe not, yet He abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you believe or not. He's the ultimate definition of faithful because he can't deny himself. He is God. Revelation 19 and 11. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. He is faithful. We can't, you can't say you believe in God and not be faithful. Well, let me take let me step back on that. I, I'm sure there's an element to believing faithful, but let's let's put let's let me put it more plain of what I mean. You can't say you have faith in God and not be faithful.
Now, of course, that depends on your definition of believe, I guess. I believe that if you believe in something, you have faith in it. You know, I, I believe that if I stand out in the middle of that road, I'm going to eventually be hit by a car. So I choose not to do that because that's my faith speaking. Did you know that doubt is faith? Either you believe it will happen, or you believe it won't happen. Both is believing. To every man is given the measure of faith. The measure. That's a specific amount. It doesn't say a measure. It doesn't mean some measure. It says the measure. That's what the scripture says. So that means that, you know, Sister Lisa, you were given the very same amount of faith as Elijah was. Wow. To every man's given the measure of faith. So, Sister Marie, shut up. So how come those men could see miracles done and we, we tend to not see those miracles? It's because their faith is activated by their faithfulness. Our faith is not activated by faithfulness. Because we tend to believe, well, eh, if it happens, great. If it doesn't, I'll live. Or won't live. Sometimes we just believe it won't happen. That person will never pray through. That'll never happen. We get sick, and the last thing we do is call for the elders of the church to pray for us. Because we're such a private people. I'm not, I'm not getting on to anybody. I want you to understand where I'm coming from here. Faithfulness is, is something that, that is grown into you through your faith. But you have to exercise faith. Faith without works is dead. So if you never allow, you know, certain things to take place, such as prayer or this or that, you'll never see faith grow. It stays that disappointed seed from the person that was told that Santa Claus is real and now he's not. It's... It's, it's so, our, our, our thinking, our processes that we go through in life or, 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 or whatever it is that causes us not to have a strength of faith in what God is trying to do in our lives. Uh, um, you know, we, we get bogged down by so many pressures in life that we tend to leave faith on the shelf. And therefore, faithfulness goes out with it. He was called faithful. God is faithful to bless me. How many has ever been blessed by God? Blessed by God. Lamentations 3, 21 through 23 says, This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. <laughs> Faith activated by words or a memory. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because of His compassions fail not, or because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. That's why it's important to share things that God has done with you with other people. 
Brother Tim, something great happens at work. God protects you. You need to go home and share it with your wife. It helps build faith. You need to tell Brother Munn about it. Open those doors. Let that faith build. I remember when God did. I remember when... I, I can tell you a story where I was... I mean, I was sick. I was... 13, 14 years old, sick, running 100 and plus, like four or five, you know, at the verge of, you know, if it got any higher, possible brain damage. My, it was coming an ice storm. They had cardboard on the windshield in case something, you know, in case they had to take, rush me to the emergency room. You know, just, I was sick. I was laying in bed and I looked at them and I told them. I said, if my Aunt Bonnie ever gets home when she prays for me I'm going to be healed I told them that of course you know how people are it'll be okay honey we're people you know child speaks that's how it goes so my aunt she comes home she comes back there she sits on the bed. She had to. I was in her bed. <laughs> sits on the bed. She talks to me for a few minutes, and she asked me specifically. She said, do you really believe that when I pray for you that God's going to heal you? And I said, yes, I believe it. She began to pray for me. The Holy Ghost moved in that room. While she prayed, my fever broke. I mean broke. I broke out in a sweat in the middle of her prayer. She didn't get to finish her prayer. I was like, I'm sweating. It was exciting. So I know what God can do. I've not only seen it with my own eyes, but I've been a part. I've, I, I've been a part of when he's done those things. So he's faithful to bless this recall to my mind, that I may have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because, of his, compa because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. He is faithful to protect me. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is, is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. I was overcome with temptation. And I'm not dishing that statement at all, and so please do not take this the wrong way. But you are not tempted any more than you are able to bear it. And with every temptation, according to the Scripture, there is a way of escape. What was the biggest, well, not one, the biggest, but it, I guess it was of the 80s, you know, the big abstinence programs on the television as well as uh, you know no drugs what what did they say just say what and then we had those education classes that taught us that no means so if if they ever said no one time that meant what regardless of what you felt like they meant it meant no right so no means no. So how come when it comes to a temptation, it's not no? We tend to fall into the temptation. We get overcome by it, overwhelmed by it. Temptation, no means no. He's faithful to forgive me. 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, 
He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, I'm going to take this a step. You may agree or disagree. I'm going to take it with you for just a few moments because I want you to, to chew on it. I know that this scripture is speaking to confession to God. I'm not telling you to go to a priest. I'm not telling you to go to confession time. But I am asking you and challenging you that if you are having an issue of a temptation that tends to continue to overcome you, get you an accountability partner. Somebody you trust. I'm not telling you to come to me. I'm telling you somebody you trust that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt they're not sharing your skeletons. And they're not judging you and confess. Because I promise you, if you'll do that, then you'll really see the healing of the Lord flow. I'm telling you. You may agree or disagree. But you listen to me and test it and see if what I'm saying is not true. He's faithful to keep me. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that called you who also will do it. Okay? The Bible teaches us that we're saved by faith and that we must walk by faith, live by faith, stand by faith, pray in faith, overcome through faith. But your faith has no power unless God is faithful. So you have to learn to trust in God and His faithfulness for your faith to be active. Now, since the fruit of the Spirit is about reproducing the character of Christ, then what does that mean about our faithfulness? And this is where it becomes challenging. I am probably one of the least judgmental people you will ever run into in your entire life. I don't judge. I don't look at people's lives and judge them. Because I promise you, this, the moment I do, you're going to find something in my life and judge me. Now, some of you may already do that, But I just don't, I, just, I just try to stay away from that stuff. You know, I don't nitpick about what you wear. I don't want you nitpicking about what I wear. You know, I don't, you know, if, if I've got a hair out of place, forgive me. I'll try to do better next time. But all that being said, when it comes to faithfulness, I'm not just talking about to the house of God or giving or anything to do with programs sponsored by the church, although those are very important. I'm talking about how you live your life needs to be faithful. We need to be the same person everywhere we go, not just in the church house. Now, I know jobs get in the way. I know stuff, this happens, that happens. All that, I, I understand. You know, back in the day when I was growing up in this, um, 
you just didn't get a job that worked on Sundays. Your pastor would absolutely flip out if you weren't there and if you were working on Sundays. That was a sin. Just didn't do it. Of course, education has come a long way, and we're not like that. I'm not like that. So I know that, you know, Sister Layman, if you have to go out and work on Sunday, you know, I understand that. It's just part of how the society we live in. And, and heaven forbid, as long as I can, I will never bank at a bank that is open seven days a week. Now, whether you do or don't, that's your business. But here's my philosophy behind it. Because I've worked in retail for as long as I have, the demand of the people is what puts the demand on the job. Why do restaurants open on Sundays nowadays? Because people quit cooking. So they started opening because the demand became more and more and more. And now you have restaurants opening, malls open, everybody's open because of this. And it's put a strain on our society, in my opinion. Because you don't have that designated day of relaxation, okay? That being said, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there are times we could be in the house of God and we're not. There are times that we could be paying our tithes and we're not. There are times that we could be living like we're supposed to and we're not. Now, it, does everybody go through those times? Yes. We all go through ups, downs, and that's not what I'm talking about tonight. So anything that you thought I was trying to teach on, move that out of your head for a second. Because this is not about who's coming to church and who, oh, he's talking about faithfulness tonight. And you start looking around and seeing who's not here, and you're thinking, mm, I knew it, he's talking. It's not what I'm talking about. So get it out of your head. What I'm talking about is how you're living your life. Are you living faithful? Because that's the key. Faithful. How you, how you respond to certain situations will tell you if you're faithful or not. Amen? You know, somebody throws a rock through your living room window. You got to remember, that's a soul too. Got to be faithful. Amen? Because it's important to be Godly all the time. Not just when eyes are upon you. Be faithful. Because if God is faithful to do those things, then we need to be just as faithful. Now, obviously, we can't be God, so there's going to be some lacks and some holes and plot holes and stuff like that that we're not going to, because we're human. So we need to be striving for that. It's imperative that we strive for it. Being faithful in your life, faithfulness in my life means that I have confidence. Revelation chapter 2, verse number 10. Put that up there for me, sis. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So let me say it like this. If you are not faithful to God in the times in which there are no tribulation, Don't expect the moment they start dragging you out of your house and begging and telling you to denounce Jesus that you're all of a sudden going to be faithful. Be
Be faithful unto death. Because you have confidence in where you're going. Faithfulness means you have convictions. Working out your own salvation through fear and trembling, right? Now that doesn't mean that you can go out there and make up your own doctrine. Well, pastor said I can work out my own salvation. Well, I'm going to get rid of this and get rid of that and a little bit of this. And, oh, I, woo. You don't make up your own doctrine. That's not what it's saying. It's saying that you, that you purposely pray about your salvation. That you constantly walk in your salvation in fear that if I'm wrong, I mean, if I tell, if I tell Brother David Johnson, Brother David, I am going to build a bridge across the Grand Canyon. And I'm going to give you $5 million to cross that bridge. Now, when I say bridge, how many of us thought of a, at least a two-lane bridge? Y'all knew I was going somewhere. Is the reason y'all didn't, right? Usually, when you say bridge, we're all of a sudden thinking of you know a bridge, like the San Francisco Bridge or you know the George you know the George Y. No, y'all knew I was fixing to say, but that bridge is only going to be an inch wide. That changes real quick about what we're thinking, right? Work out your own salvation through fear and trembling. He knows that if he makes a wrong step on that bridge, it's bye-bye birdie. Now, luckily, your salvation is not an inch wide. But the Bible does say narrow is the way. Straight. Right? That's what the scripture says. So, meaning that if I'm walking in that path, that I'm afraid that if I move any way right or left, I'm going to be out of that path. That's what working out your own salvation means. I mean, you come up with your own doctrine. Well, you can believe that you've got to be baptized in Jesus' name, but I believe da 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 well, it's not about what you believe or what I believe. It's what the Word of God says. Right? So I live within those realms. Because that's what, that's what working out my own salvation means. I have convictions. Now, that also means that there are going to be times that God's going to speak to you about certain things. It may not be something that's addressed from the pulpit. Maybe just you personally. Right? Convictions. Maybe you need to listen to some of those things that come across sometimes. Instead of thinking it was a bad pizza. Faithfulness means you have commitment. This is one of the hardest things to get church members to do is commit. They're okay as long as somebody else is running with the torch. But don't ask me to run with the torch. 1 Timothy 1 and 12. Put that up there for me, please. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful. Putting me into the ministry. Now, what did I say we all were when I first started? We were all called into the... He counts us faithful. We don't want to let him down, do we? Consistency. Faithfulness in my life means that I'm consistent. Luke 16 and 10.
He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Faithful in the least. Being faithful, being consistent. The Bible teaches us that faithfulness must be demonstrated in our relationships with people as well as our relationship with God. Only relationships built in confidence, conviction, commitment, and consistency can survive. Remember, faith or faithfulness is dependence. How many depended upon your car to get here tonight? So some of you walked. How many of you walked? Well, then somebody not telling the... Maybe your car's not dependable. How many doesn't have a dependable car? I'm just kidding. I had four people raise their hand on depending on their car. Nobody raised their hand in walking, so we got a lot of independable cars out there. We need to help you with that. To the best of my ability, I'll recommend a good mechanic. We're, we depend on things, right? You go out to get in your car, you put the key in, you expect something to happen. Turn the air conditioner on 70, we expect it to get to, right? You know? We expect certain things. You ever, you ever took a drink of something that you expected it to be something else? It didn't turn out too good, did it? Even though it might be a drink that you enjoy. You expected it. Like Sprite and water look a lot alike. If I picked up a Sprite or a glass that looked like it was supposed to be water and it was Sprite, but I'm thirsty. See, Sprite doesn't necessarily quench my thirst. It, it helps me sometimes when I preach so much to, to soothe my throat a little bit because of the fizz. But, but it doesn't help me. You know, it doesn't help my thirst at all. So if I was to drink a Sprite when I was really thirsty, I'd probably spit it all out immediately in a not very nice manner, <laughs> like an explosion. That's just, you know, that's how we think of things. So somebody sent me a picture today of somebody taking a bag of Skittles and a bag of M&Ms and pouring them in the same bowl. I would be absolutely angry <laughs> if I grabbed a handful of them things, even though I like Skittles just fine, and thinking I'm getting a mouthful of chocolate, and it's fruity, chocolatey mess, it's not going to turn out pretty. We're depending on things. It's how we are. We depend upon it. So being faithful... It's being dependent. So when we say we're faithful to God, that means we're dependent upon Him. Not ourselves, not our wallets, not our health insurance, not our stocks and bonds and savings accounts and 401ks. Uh, that's all good. You need that stuff. But I'm still dependent upon God. Because in him I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Okay? In those traits above, they are invisible to the average person. But obvious to those who know us well. That's why... I some people you can you can fool some people to say that they you know well that person's got integrity. You can fool some people because they're, they're they're it's invisible traits. But to the person that knows you well knows real quickly whether or not you're faithful. 
I mean, you got some family members that come to borrow some money, and all of a sudden you're broke. You conveniently left your wallet at home. Or you're out of the last checks. Right? But some of those family members that come to you, want to, if, they, if they come to you ever borrow money, you would go to the bank and draw it out for them. Because number one, you know how faithful they are. And number two, they've never asked you for a dime. That shows you faithfulness. So the question bears in mind for you to ask yourself, are you the one that the person conveniently forgot the checkbook? Or the person that they would go to the bank and draw the money out for. Because that lets you know if you're faithful or not. Today, we need to understand that our freedom, even though our men and women and, that have died overseas to give us this great freedom, our freedom and the cost that it is and how much we appreciate those. My brother, being a veteran, I, I, underst you know, I, I, I empathize with his sacrifice. I don't understand it because I didn't have to do it. But, but I empathize with it and I respect it and I appreciate him for it. And we've got veterans in our, in our congregation that, that we appreciate what they've done for our country. But even at that, there's still something that's greater calling in life than the military. And that's being faithful to God. We have a greater cause to be faithful. Matthew 25 and 21 says this. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Now this is a parable that Jesus was teaching. But in reality, we, we preach about God telling us this, but we sometimes don't realize what that means. Well done, thou good. We want to skip the faithful part. Say, well, he was a good person, but was he faithful? Faithful is dependent. Was he dependent upon God? 1 Corinthians 4 and 2. Put that up there for me. Moreover, it is required in the stewards that, that a man be found faithful. Now, the NIV says it like this. Now, it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. To whom much is given, much is. If we're going to trust somebody, a lot of times they have to prove that trust. Right? That's, that's why I know. I'm, I'm a job in progress. I have to continue to earn trusts as I go. As well as you, with relationships that you build. That's all a part of being faithful. Right or wrong? We want to be faithful, don't we? I want to be faithful. I want to be dependent. On God. I want to be dependable to you. And the same comes back this direction. You know, we want to be dependent on God and be dependable to certain things. And, and with, when we are dependable, then things can progress. Amen? It's imperative. I mean, you know, if, if, if offerings were inconsistent, if, you know, if, if, you know if, if I didn't know whether or not the lights were going to be shut off next week or not, because, you know, the bills weren't being paid or, or whatever the case may be, you know, and, 
we come in the church, we expect the lights to be on. Who expects the air to be flowing when you come in the church? Right? It's something we expect. So that's my job as, as a pastor is to make sure those things stay. Stay where we can be. But at the same point, we got to make sure we're doing it all for the glory of Him. Amen. That when we walk out those doors, we are faithful people. That they look at, at, at us and say, that man's got something that I want to be a part of. Don't be ashamed of who you are. Be excited about your heritage. And allow it to show. And allow faithfulness to be an ever part of your life. Let's all stand together. Again, I want you to, to know... I am not bashing anybody over the head. This was a series of lessons that I felt led to teach, and so I'm teaching them, but it's not because I feel like any of you are unfaithful. Okay? I want us to be faithful. Amen? And we can do it together. I want to do it together, don't you? Amen? Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads together. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in our life. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're continuing to do in this church. I thank you, Lord, for the new people that are coming into the doors. I thank you, Lord, for them coming to an altar. I thank you, Lord, for them being touched. I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost moving back and forth between us, O God. Lord, I appreciate, God, what you have done in this church throughout the years and the faithfulness that has been taught in this building. Oh, Lord, I, I appreciate the faithfulness more than they'll ever know, God. I've been in churches where people weren't faithful and weren't dependable. I've been in churches, Lord, where, where, where you didn't know where so-and-so was for weeks on end. I, I appreciate, God, the faithfulness to the house of the Lord. I appreciate, Lord, the faithfulness in what they do in teaching Bible studies and reaching out to those and witnessing God. I appreciate that, Lord. I appreciate, Lord, everything that, the, that Brother Paris has ever taught this church as far as faithfulness. But, God, we're living in a new era where, where the world is becoming more and more prevalent, Lord, and becoming more and more rampant with things. And I pray, God, help us to continue to be faithful. Help us to be faithful in those few things, those least things, those things that most people wouldn't even consider. For if we're faithful in those things... You are going to make us ruler over many things. And I trust you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you just worship the Lord for a moment? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well... Be in prayer. I know Sunday uh, we've got, um, we'll all be here. Uh, but next Wednesday at 5 a.m., the buses will be rolling out of town for Youth Congress. And um, I'm assuming you got something to say. Yes. Um, we have tons of great soda and water for the trip. If you want to get us a mug free. Make sure you don't mix the Skittles and the M&M's. Amen. Amen. But um, we're going to be pulling out come 5 o'clock uh, Wednesday morning uh, for power pack services and sessions. And um, those of you that have never been a part of a youth congress, if you ever get a chance to go, it's, I know it says youth congress, but it's for everybody. When you have 18,000 people, apostolic, Jesus' name, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, gathered into a building. The power is beyond imagination. I've seen, I was sharing this with uh, 
uh, some people Sunday night. I have seen workers in the building coming out onto the floor to receive the Holy Ghost that were just there because that's their job. You know, they, they, I've seen it in my own eyes. It's amazing. And uh, so just, just be in prayer for that trip, and uh, we shall return, I guess, the following Sunday. Uh, we'll be back in that Sunday afternoon at some point or another. So uh, keep us in your prayers as we travel because I don't know if I'm going to let Brother Munn drive or I'm going to drive. I don't know. I don't know if I trust him yet or not. I'm just kidding. Amen. I'm sure he's, I'm, he's not running red lights. I am, so I can't talk too much about it. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Uh, yes, Sister Melody. Did I miss something? My wife gets on to me for that sometimes. See, I don't have that. that I, I hand, the handout that I give, faithfulness to God is found in the habits of our lives that no one else can see. Did I get it? All right. So I usually put it in bold what's on your paper so I know that I touch on that but some this one was underlined I apologize all right anything else God bless you you're dismissed as in Jesus name greet each other's as brothers and sisters in the Lord